degree of preparation. Uh, my education and my career of I feel about 94 of them that can be one of the typical things that I see as my income that I can go to the next thing and get my new knowledge. After that, I founded a digital banking firm which uh, I moved into a DPO. The DPO was acquired in 
Now all of us know the hotel was there on income is on the right hand side, expertise is on the left hand side. Assuming that you are profitable and you are making a reasonable you know, buy, typically this will be 185 will be your expenditure, 50 will be your profit. It can become 20, it can become 10, it can become minus in certain stages of your business, whatever it is. But just take a typical case. Now that 100, who owns? The first step it brings the client. Year 1, so in the year 2002, when I restarted by the year 2 years, I bought clients, they still have clients. Okay? How many clients have gone back to them? There are 2 to 3 years about contracts in the market. So the work is done in getting them, every month the building is being generated, every month the order is being happening. So in year 1, I did one business year and bought clients. After that, what did I do? To retain the clients, they did. It was my operations team that kept on delivering every day, continuously. And what that revenue is, they did deliver, I put them in the bill in year 4 or in year 5 or in year 8. So, about 80 to 85% of that revenue is attributable to regular forwardless operations. 2025 is the year in which you get to acquire that plan and transition the project, the CEO will be after that, it's going to be going after some other client. And if the operation which is taking over and delivery, operation not delivery, in a profit flow, you can enter from delivery and manufacturing business with the operation. That is getting about 80 to 85 percent of that 100 which is the delivery. Correct? So that is how important operation is there. On the expenditure side, which is the defense side, uh, you spend about 85 rupees for every 100. Who spends it?
too much you know like like I have seen some people come from outside, activities higher, immediately want to do religion for the right one, want to do I O. So people are very very interested in fact meetings and you know MR meetings and talking about I O. What is the procedure that we talked about other than actually doing the policy? Thank you. 
being offline and your process is in place. Thank you, sir. So, this is what I mean by consistent and consistent. Our company will go for an HR department and an ISO manual which will write how they are going to be how they pay their PDS, how they pay their PA, how they pay their marks, how they will write back on their PS and what?
GPT, full form is go task I forget the full form. Getting things done. Getting things done. Sorry, yeah. Getting things done. And it came out of a book for getting things done because of how to manage your task and therefore how to manage your project and therefore how to manage your process and how to manage your operation. So there are about 80 GPT apps out there in the market. And GPD has a huge, uh, you know, uh, way in which it can be done. Uh, there are simple things that can only manage tasks. You write your own list, you have to finish your ticket, it's simple. You can delegate, so you can write a task and say, yes, hey, secretary, please deposit this check, kind of delegate. Then you can have a task in a list, so you know, something like a home renovation, you can say carpenter will do this, mason will do this, painter will do this. And so on and so forth. Then you can attach voice files, you can have PDF files. So the complexity can going up in. You come to project management software to the other end of this thing. So you have a whole bunch of software across this thing. What are that software? What are that Ashtray? I use the software called Ashtray. A-S-T-R-I. A-S-T-R-I. They got recently taken over by Yara. Because, you know, sorry. One of the problems we, I don't want to put in my personal stuff on there in the sense that everybody's got their own uh, business issues. One of the things that I guess speak for a lot of small businesses is that one of the things, for example, I uh, struggle with at times as you try to implement a software called uh, Brightboard. What? Brightboard. Uh, yeah. Again, that content, whatever you call it, to do this. Now what happens is if something is due, a payment is due, they are supposed to receive a payment. It is small payment. Now as a CEO, a large payment is coming in from a client. It's going to be in your hand, you know, 24 7. But suppose there are these small, small payments that are supposed to come in, or you need to make a payment to someone, or some invoice needs to be checked, whatever. So it's a struggle to always communicate that to your operations guy, that you know, this needs to be done on a monthly basis. A lot of times you operate with that, I do So to get rid of that sort of uh, inconsistency as you mentioned, uh, that's why you probably need like a software where this process is at least seamless, you know. Get it done from over me. 
So what we did in Vital Link is that we still have operations, we have quality, we have HR, we have IT, all these functions are there. But we have one uh, email ID, one person, one uh, Skype ID, one uh, you know one arch phone number, which is for support. So all our customers talk to support, no matter what. Whether it's building or they really want to catch my neck for something, they talk to me. But otherwise, most of the time when it's delivery, they talk to support. So they send an email to support, or they get on Skype and chat with support, or they call up that number and support answers. So it's one point of contact. Then support will go to you know operations or quality and resolve that problem and reply that. Okay. So though the organization may be uh, functional, uh, you know, in its approach, the way you interpret because you can you can put together a customer facing team that gives the customer a seamless one window. Opportunity rather than having a five or ten person organization for the customer having to go, oh, billing ko bol diya, billing ko check So, you know, it should not be like that. <laughs> so, you can have one uh, support team or delivery team or customer, uh, whatever you want to call it, customer facing team, that will uh, be that one window of contact for the customer. The second point is that we often fail to recognize that we have internal customers and we have external customers. The, the quality of the operation, uh, so, so let me give a little bit for you know, to, to clarify this. Uh, you have support functions. Let us say ID is today a support function in almost any organization. So if the keyboard has to work, the mouse has to be proper, the antivirus has to be up to date, Windows and updates you know, have to be installed, backups have to be taken. So it's the IT support function, irrespective of whether you are making conveyor belts or selling fabric or doing agricultural operations or running a in a medical tourism. The, the operation deeper, the operational functions which you know maybe fabric selection or conveyor belt rubber buying kind of selection. Our internal customers to the support team, the IT team. If the IT team doesn't deliver the best services to the operations team, the operations team cannot deliver the best services to the external customers. Very often in operations, we compromise the internal customer. You know, operation will say, Mera laptop chalta nahi hai, or something like that. And we will look at the IT, the IT fellow is going to be, or something like that, you know, some issue will be there. You will tell the operations guy, you know, you channel it for the customer the presentation. If you, you know, take it, you will put it on his machine and show him the presentation, or something like that, you know. We will try to compromise the situation because the support function has not delivered to the internal customer. The, the, the way to look at this is to see your organization. We, we often have a view of the organization as somebody sitting on the top and observing your owners in the order and looking at your organization and there being definite boundaries of the organization. This is the vendor, he says to me that this is my organization and this is my customer. To whom I say. Okay, this is how we look at our organization, there are different boundaries. And within the organization, we don't see internal customer and external customer. Rather than taking that view, you have to take a seamless view of your operations. So, so if you have a bad vendor, let me give you an example. If you have a bad vendor, let's say somebody doesn't supply your stationary card. The pencil keeps on breaking. Or the mouse, you know, the marker pen dry on the mic. Or you know the paper printer doesn't come out properly, the paper is not a problem. So that vendor his delivery can go into a support function which can be taking out a HR appointment. The HR appointment data doesn't come out, the candidate is not very happy, he's sitting there, HR tells her, hey, she had a machine with paper, I say, candidate is listening. Okay, candidate comes in, he's a sales manager, his impression is not very good, he goes to a customer. And he carries that impression with him, that you know this company doesn't deliver well because they can't buy this paper. So, so you have to think of 
excellence in operations as something that is seamlessly traveling to your organization. Like a flow of water. If you are in a dirty water, if you think of a river with dirty water, and your organization is somewhere in the middle of that dirty water, what would happen? It's going to, dirty water is going to come in, dirty water is going to go out. So you have to have your organization in clean water. Which means your vendors have to be good, they have to deliver seamlessly to you, then your internal customers will be happy. Your, your internal customers are happy, they will deliver very well, your external customers will be happy. So that is the key model. Okay? So you have, don't think that your business only starts with external customers, your business starts with vendors. Uh, suppose you are working in an area where there is a lot of uh, uh, people in your process, a uh, lot of processes are involved in unorganic sector. Like, uh, let's talk uh, in sector, like the hair saloons, the, the small, much of unorganic sectors. Then how can you make sure that this process, I mean, you can give the example of... What is the difference with saloon? Uh, no, no, the, the point here is, how can you make sure that these saloons can be, uh, to, can be brought by good benchmark? Like, uh, how can you make that sector that people like, suppose the saloon is there, it was on some uh, not very profitable condition, it doesn't have any process of optimization or something like that. Then how you can apply those things over here? Uh, see, we will not go into individual business issues because that will be a concern. You know, I, I think you came in late. Yeah. So, so, over lunch if you want, I can talk to you on this. But if I start troubleshooting how to fix saloons, then others will get bored. No, I yeah, worry about this. Okay, but but in abstract, the principle is to have good vendors, good suppliers, good employees, happy employees who can deliver good solutions to your customers. If if this seamlessly and your organization boundaries are not like well defined, they are actually porous. So today you might have a security guard with your employee. Tomorrow you say contract. So now where is the security guard? Is he on this side of the line or is he on that side of the line? He still needs to do the security, he still needs to see that nobody walks out of your laptop. Correct? So think of operation as a porous, seamless entity out of which you are somewhere in the middle and the borders keep moving. But water comes in and water goes out must be clean water, not dirty water. Uh, the last is, you know, uh, uh, what do customers want? And that is always a challenge. Uh, often, customers don't know what they want. And therefore, because customers don't know what they want, uh, you, your operations and your CEO and your sales uh, is not really delivering the solution that is uh, is most ideal, can, can maximize the revenue, is good for the business and is good for the customer. So there is this Henry Ford you know, famous saying that if I ask them more, then they would have wanted a faster cost. <coughs> so sometimes you have to be innovative and we will talk about this uh, later on. But uh, sometimes you have to almost anticipate what the customer wants and you know, do products that are ahead of what he thinks he needs. So, so, so can somebody, you know, name some product like that, that, that came into being and we didn't even know that we needed it and today it's almost indispensable. Smartphone. Smartphone. Emails. Facebook. Facebook, good example. Where was social media? I mean, did we even know that we needed Facebook five years before? Or Twitter? Or Instagram? Any of this, Google Plus, whatever. I mean, okay, Google Plus is social media marketing, but but you know, they're coming up with things. Google Glasses. I don't know. It might it might be the you know five years from now, I don't know if the Google Glass company. Do, do we think we need it today? You know. So anyway, so 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 aligning your process to meet the customer requirement also means anticipating what the customer wants and aligning your process to some extent to do that. Of course, one doesn't. Go and start operations without test marketing and doing a piloting and stuff like that. It will be about it. So, how to go about it? Something about you know, your saloon. Uh, basically, 
the process involves doing what is known as process math. And there are very good books there are, you know, the internet is, you know, Dr. Google can give you address on everything practically today. So, so, so if you are an organization of a certain size, then you definitely do need to do a process math. Uh, let me give an analogy to uh, you, you let's say you know you are going into an office and you want to do networking. Yeah. So without a networking that you can go and do request to the organization. I said no. If you, if you want to renovate a building without a diagram of the columns and beams and civil architecture, can you renovate a building? Actually no, you need to know what exists. So what exists and what runs your business is the process man. If you don't have a process man, you are trying to repair an automobile without doing things. Say the fuel line system of the automobile or this part of the electrical system of the automobile. And it's just putting a hand there and do So you may be the CEO, you may be the founder, you may be just 10 people strong. But believe me, there are processes happening in an organization that you don't know how they are happening. And sometimes you don't want to know. Are you going to You know, bank will have it all day. PDS will have it all day. You don't know where he is going and what he is doing with the bank and how each bank is going to be. And tomorrow, your future is not there. Nobody knows how to pay the PDS. Because the future is not there. The future is not there. So, I have just given a simple example of a small organization and that is something else. You don't know who the vendor for your paper is. So, there is no paper in the organization because there are purchase care on the team. So, so, you know, so on and so forth. So, the first thing is to make a process math. Uh, it involves, uh, you know, process definition, define the process, which is the start point, which is the end point, what is the issue, what is the process, what is the output of the process, what is the primary process, what is the alternate process, if the bank is closed, go to the other bank, make a new check in the name of the new bank, and have inspection points, that is, you know, at what point, you know, the charan comes back, chapar and the opponent will see the view. So those are inspection points. So, so this is how you need to go about mapping the process and my suggestion is that if you have 5-10 people start mapping your processes, it need not be in such detail, but at least everybody must understand that there is a process to this madness that happens when you are delivering and, and you know something about how to improve the saloon could be to first understand what is the process so that there may be you know for the lapses in the process, the process may not be uh, being carried. In the next lecture, we we'll talk about the more when we talk about productization of service. Uh, there are three steps. Uh, one is there are every process is a process owner. So again, coming back, pay the chalana or buy paper. Buy paper will have some, you know, some admin head will be there or some. Uh, uh, vendor manager will be there, will be responsible for buying paper. So he is a direct process owner. And he has to write down what process he does when he buys a buys paper or uh, you know uh, pays income etc. into the bank. Uh, somebody who is senior or if somebody is not a senior and doesn't know enough about the process, you might bring in a consultant, has to has to verify that the process is correct and it is the correct process as is. One point that comes out in process mapping is that uh, I as the owner of the business think that the paper must be bought from this shop and should be of this quality. But and I think it happens like that. But what is actually happening is that it is being bought from that shop, so the first of all is that we have to take it from another shop. So it is being bought from another shop and it is not of the same quality. So there is a process that is being mapped as this. That is the current process is the pure cash of the bus stop buys the shop from paper from the shop and comes to your office. Whereas what you desire is buy it from the better stationery shop so that you put paper in the So so you have to first capture it as this. And then have a discussion and say that this is what you are currently doing, but this is how we desire it to be done, and these are the reasons. And then all the questions of the and start showing. 
So he will say that there are number of the number of the number of the will come on a reasons. You know why he doesn't want to put them? Shop for the day. Because for him, buying paper is a shop. Not seeing that the printer, you know, paper is not in the printer. And the appointment later doesn't come out. So you demand this job, so you have to give you visibility to what happens downstream because it doesn't buy good for people. So you have to enter into the process and you have to all the all the things of change management will start right now, rearing on the edge. But you have to quit. Because ultimately you want clean water, right? You don't have to water in the edge. There is a process map, it could be like a flowchart. There is a process map. Then, after the process map, there would be procedures. It would be like a word document. You can say, uh, our procedure is to buy paper when we are the last one. So that we never run out of paper. Our procedure is to buy paper of A4 from Balanpur means of meeting this point. Okay, of this much case. So this will be a procedure document. Then after that, after the procedure document, uh, the process map, the procedure document, and then there will be a checklist. If you want to add a checklist, you know, that's an option. Uh, this is your bad checklist. And lastly, there will be a uh, inner quality control. That was the paper bought from BIRP, was it always ordered before the last one got out? A quick QC or, you know, deviation from the procedure. So this would be the last four steps. And how it gets implemented, whether it's a word document, whether it's a or is the procedure manual could, uh, could depend upon the scale of the organization. The, the, the first one is the policy. So what is the policy of the organization? The policy of the organization is to buy the best papers of the printers and get jam. At the same time, not spending unnecessarily too much. You don't take out every appointment later on and, you know, on a decorative paper like a wedding invitation card. Obviously not. But at the same time, the paper has to be of good quality so that it doesn't smudge and it looks nice. The idea is that, let's say your person quits from mm -hmm. having, let's say, the paper mm -hmm. uh, or getting the paper, mm -hmm. if you are a new person on board, mm -hmm. that person should not be lost or right. overwhelmed and enjoyed. So they, they, they just go through the document and they actually go mm -hmm. through the process where they need to work on it. He, the the fellow doing the work, whatever what happens, the emotional person doing the work, they're also not going to have to do the work. So even if he's going on leave, sometimes there's a process of labor. The process of labor. If there's addition, the process of labor. So somebody else can take over the process. And can you find a difference? So, if you have any of these operations, you can get a lot of obligation on that. The mapping the process, if you one-time take, you will review it every three months, you will review it every six months, depending upon how rapidly you are going. There will be changes all the time, because that Xerox shop is stopped, but our doesn't make that quite a paper. So there will be changes all the time. Because that Xerox shop is stopped, but our doesn't make that quite a paper. Or they have, you know, increased the prices dramatically, and then you want to review your cost. There will always be changes, it is like flowing water.
So you are a lawyer and you are working on a client's case, you have to write up your time sheet to the law. So there are software available like this, but they totally take this software that will pop up a checklist before you do it. And the reason why I say this is important is that 
let's say you get a let's say you are today your sales is at 100. You get a customer who is 40. So he's going to make your every day 140. His EBITDA may be you know 10% will be added to the PAD, 15%. Typically that's what it is. So your profit which is 15, that is how it will become in a uh, 23. That is what the profit will be. But supposing that 85 which you are spending in operations and you are going to optimize operations and you knock off 10% of that operation cost from 15, if you knock off 80, then you have already made it 23 without adding a single customer. And everybody is happy, you are suddenly moved from 30 to 15 to 20. Because the profit will be so much. So that is how profitable good operations can be. It can make or mar your growth, it can make or mar your bottom line, it can make or mar your willingness of your investors to fund you. It can make or mar your ability to hire better quality people so that they deliver for this and they don't they are not you know shirking one. So, so questions? Any discussion before we take a break? We'll come back to that. Take a five minutes break. So, maybe the CEO's training has to be there. But once the system is in place, then it is just an ordinary view. You don't need exposure to other systems. That's what overall you say first. Take an example of McDonald's. Mm -hmm. There are systems in place. The people who work in McDonald's are college kids or, or school kids. Ordinary people are having five hours salary. But the system works in the business term because of system, not because of people. That's what the, the, the okay, right. And that is something that again for the salute. You know, if the salute is not delivering consistently and seamlessly, uh, it's probably because the process is not defined and the people are not understood what the process should be. Thank you. 
this customer is coming at good time. Once in a way, you know, there's always this customer who goes a paper, mostly they put it in the basket. So, you know, this should not create displeasure. So, they took these people and they redefined their job. And they said that your job is not to come crash, but your job is to keep the place clean, even if a customer dirties like this. So, suddenly, their, their perception of how to deal with the problem changed. So when they went up and down, when they saw the paper, they went and told those people, oh, let me do that for you. And they went up with a smile they put it back. So the job was to keep the place clean and not, and not pick up trash with the customer and customer. So earlier it was like, tomorrow I'm going to go to my man and me. Now it was happy because he was keeping the place clean. So sometimes redefining the job role helps him bring about the Okay, we'll take a break. We'll continue. The, the next one is also very similar. It's a kind of flow on this. So, you know, we are going to go more examples. More live illustration. Somebody said, you know, I should be an example of my own business. Which I can do. You know, I can share it. But, uh, then it, you know, that applies going to situation in my business, which may not be you know, Maybe I will try to share those more examples. Uh, this one is with a solution. Okay, so we are running both axes over there. 
okay? So, so now I'm talking a CEO language. Uh, so the CEO, the first half, has invested so much, he's put ISO, he's put MAN, he's put ASTRAID, he's made a checklist, process is running properly, good paper is being bought, challenges are being paid on time. So why change all this? So turn back, I mean, competition has invested so much. Competition, but they are in the everybody else is not. Exactly. So, 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 so the, the CEO will not see that as a reason, because the CEO is not facing the external market. And again, I will come back to this, you may be a small business, you may be the CEO and the CEO yourself, you handle both, you straddle both roles, or multiple roles, morning go with your CEO, afternoon your CEO, so this question and this debate will happen to be a good side of every day that I say, okay, there will be two people, but I will use the language as if they are two different people, okay, so it might be the same person. So the CEO say that, you know, everything is fine, we are sexy for quality, customers are not complaining, Delivery is beautiful, charata are being paid on time, we didn't have any, you know, Saturday compliance issues. Why change? And that is when the CEO has to step in and say, boss, you did a perfectly good job, CEO. I really love you, but we need to change. Okay, and, and the change was happening in a managed consistent basis. We thought uh, upsetting the existing customers and disturbing the company. Okay. So the first is you know the, the analogy of blue ocean and red ocean. So blue ocean is water again, very clean, fishes are swimming, everything is thriving, everything is beautiful, and and really there is a lot of growth and prosperity in every side. The red ocean is when everybody is eating everybody. The shark is eating the small fish, the small fish is eating the smaller smaller fish, and the whale is coming and eating the shark and there is blood in the ocean and nobody is happy because everybody is killing the other <coughs> so all businesses and, and, and there are a lot of examples and data and share start out as blue oceans all innovation start as blue oceans and all of them become red oceans so if your business is not profitable you have to ask which ocean are you doing and how do we move from the red ocean to the blue ocean? Give me an example. Okay, smartphone, iPhone. Beautiful invention, fantastic, sexy, magic, apps, etc. And now we have Android. And we have Galaxy. And we have Tags. So, anybody following Apple knows that once Steve Jobs has passed away, so no matter how process map company you have, you cannot process them daily. <laughs> and drive and innovation. <laughs> okay, you can't say there is a process map of sexist for creativity. It has to come from within. So there is still that thing that you cannot you know, kind of uh, structure down, which is creativity. And, and, and now Apple is not doing too well. And I think they are the first quarter of process for it. And everybody is moving to an Android. I have an iPhone, but I am sure that my next phone is going to be an Android. And this gets over it will be this. So even somebody like Apple, who I think saved uh, some six billion dollars in offshore tax securities or anything that you don't remember the number, even they are becoming not very profitable. So every business is going to go from a red ocean to a blue ocean at some point. So you need to keep changing, and as I said, the only constant thing is change. And you need to keep changing and you need to keep innovating. Either your process or your product. So that is the thing. Uh, when you innovate, you can improve your process. I give you the example of, uh, of uh, how we got all the IT of all the branches into one end and we include our margin by 30%. So you can do product improvement in the way in which you deliver the product. And that can mean happier customers and better clients. So for example, you know, you were, you were asking me about uh, you know, how to render the shipping service. So the question was that, you know, he has centers all over the place and he manages, you know, uh, level channel. 
question is that how we what is the current process and how we map the process? What can you also what can you make the customer do for you? So I gave you an example of how we used to hire an HR. Is that we we repeated 30 people for a process, new process come. So you put an ad, 300 people you can do you know hire 30. So how to make this hiring process efficient? So we found that everybody sends a CV and every CV is you know, very creative and own format. So we created an app or a, or a software where the candidate would keep your office, we would make him enter the CV in a machine and we kept it in the So today he was doing our work because entering his CV in our work. Then we gave him a, he was allotted a number. The system gave him a number once the CV was accepted. Then he went to, for two weeks a speed test, which is what we are doing. So when he did the speed test, the machine itself telling that your quality was so much, your you know, rate was so much, and therefore you are accepted for the possible interview, or not accepted, please go and improve your typing and normal. Then the machine went to the, you know, to the HR person, and there we had a checklist of what are questions to ask. To HR. And these are all simple things, this happened over two, three years. <coughs> And therefore, we could improve the HR hiring process and get better candidates. And those better candidates deliver better job to our clients and So, so you can improve your margins in that way. Uh, every every uh, quality control or every uh, process control methodology, be it ISO or Six Sigma or quality system or whatever. We have something called continuous improvement plan. How do you continuously improve? So, so if you go keep on doing improvement with your product or to your process of how you deliver the product, which is what happens in the service sector, the continuous improvement plan doesn't work. So that is broken. So you are stuck in that old uh, Blackberry model or the Motorola model or the Nokia model. And therefore, you know, you are not as hot anymore in the market as you once were. So that it keeps the customer delighted because the customer sees that something new is now happening. Maybe same price, maybe mark price, maybe faster delivery, whatever. It could be so many times and we will share a slide on that. And the last thing is that, you know, if you are either a product or a service, you can break up the service and make it into one or two services to work. So for example, service should not apply. So 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 you could you could you could have a haircut with a muscle thrown in at a discount or put oil for some price or dye the hair or tint the hair. So you can upsell or you can cross sell the same product by by you know continuously and that can improve your margins. So these are the various reasons why there should be a product improvement as a continuous part of your organization uh, for it to grow. I give the example of, you know, I had a choice. It could be an entrepreneur or it could be an employer. And each one of you has a choice, right? Each one of you can today go and take a job somewhere and be whatever. VP, general manager, whatever. If you were an employee, what would happen? Every year you would say, well, I've the present in the where is my increment? Have I got a promotion? Is my job definition changing? You would ask all these questions. All the questions that your employee should ask you. What is my career path? And they want growth. If you as an entrepreneur don't set a career path for your organization, to product improvement, how are you going to be the career path of it? If you don't grow, how are you? So you, you know, he asked me about you can run my startup. So many of you know that there is a Mumbai marathon which is a place, and it's by an organization called ProCam. And ProCam is the people who run the Mumbai marathon. They open on other events. Uh, they run the last week was the Mangalore PCS 10K, which is another event. And I came out with a product which ProCam used in uh, January 2013. This is about six months of my launch. They use the product, they like the product, 
and they came back to Myanmar and actually said, so they came back to me and they said, oh, we want it for Bangalore. Okay. So I gave it to them and I still said, give me free because they want customers. What does the product do? So we are still in Shell. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so the product helps runners and their medical problems. Oh. Because the motor is already running for good health. So it brings about good health to the running strategy. So, so you know, they, they told me that you know they want to do that. The product was given, and uh, then we went and went home. We went to Pune, and there's no. So he said, you know, when you know you you left your business, you're not doing Pune. You don't go to Bela. You don't have people there. And what are you going to do? I mean, because he's worried that I start doing you know events like him, and start doing marketing in Mumbai, and I don't want something like that. So I told him, no, I'm not going to do running. I'm not going to do training or anything. But I'm going to do things that. Grow the running community. All people like this gentleman here to start running and losing his weight. <laughs> and, and, and there will be more runners. And I said that today you have banked of 10k, there should be, you have four events, there should be the first 50 event event. And my job is to see that I promote running and to make 50 event then you your organization, you are in price. So if there is no product improvement and if there is no innovation, there cannot be growth in your organization. The organization will be stagnant. The employees who are driven and who are not change averse will keep you in. And you will be stuck with employees who don't want to change. And you will soon be in the red ocean. Because the others will come and change. So you have to have that conversation every three months, every six months with your employees, with your team. What can we do different? If you don't keep having that conversation, you and your employees will get into a relationship where you know after one year, you will go into a process mapping. If you have a problem, you will have a problem. And then you know the conversation becomes difficult and you are in trouble with that point. So you must continuously have a conversation of how we can do things better and how we can improve the product. The delivery of the product, how we can possibly do it. So, so this is something that I found and how do we go about product improvement and read out because the this was this. So he says, you know, 10,000 starting points to improve your product. More tolerant, more loving, more colorful, more creative, more comprehensive, more modern, more understandable, more efficient. Okay, as I read this point, think about your own business and think more efficient. Okay, and I think this is more efficient. Okay, and, and 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 more rewarding, more personal, more ecological, meaning environment, more durable, more simple. Remember the product can be simple. More lighter, more beautiful, more smaller, more pleasant, more unique, more up to date, more mobile, more luxurious, more practical. More interesting, more human. So if you take all these points and sit down with your business, you know, take a cup of coffee, you know, and sit down in a quiet corner of your house, think about how your business can be any one of these. I'm sure if you're a if you're a CEO bubbling with ideas, you'll come to at least 25 ways in which you can make your product name. So how many people are out here thinking of some ideas about how they can improve their product? Excellent. Very happy. Good. Well, I wish you all well in your business. Change of process 
and the market is already there. This is assured data selling. How do you evaluate? So the question is not about risk and return. Sorry. The question is not about risk and return. Yes. So if you invest more in innovation and you take some bold steps and that risk pays off, then the return will also be that much higher. So risk and return are correlated. More risk, more return. It also means more risk does not necessarily mean always more return. You can't take anything. You have to know that risk will be failure also. Most people think that oh, I will take a big risk and I will get a lot of return. You might end up like you know Sri Sir. Or that any one of these guys will do So, so if you invest in R and D, come up with your own pharma molecule, it might be a two year life cycle. Because the, the pharma chain is a very long chain. We first do the event there, first you do your money, then you put clinical trials, then you move, get a peer approach, then you move into a human, then you do clinical trials, then you see whether any patent toys may be infringed. You look at the patent, then you do you know test marketing in certain isolated markets, see if it's happening in good people, and then you are ready to do a commercial launch. So the cycle is about five to seven years before you can come out with a new molecule into the market. But that will get a patent for 20 years, so that under the 15 years of which you can commercially exploit the product. So that is what, I mean that is pharma innovation. Uh, if you are in other innovation, the cycle will not be longer because if the, the pharma innovation cycle is longer because you have consumed, somebody is consuming that product. It is going to affect the health, so it has to be that much more cautious. Whereas you know, if you are in software or fabrics or, or you know, maybe agriculture or IT services, innovation cycles can be shorter and the investment is less. So it is a risk and reward. Whereas improvisation means that we in the existing product, the risk is not very high. CEO works on improvisation and CEO on innovation. That's a very good way to think about. <laughs> so, so how to do product uh, improvement? These are all various ways in which you can do product improvement. Uh, how do we go about in an organization? Actually, most uh, most software companies will say, oh, we have a problem and we have a solution. They don't say selling your software, they say I'm selling your solution. Which is nice language. And, and what it means is that the solution is a solution to a problem. How do you identify the problem? Is the how do you identify the problem? So, so how did you identify the problem? What is your problem statement? This is when our operation is not going the way they should. No, no. They, you, you came out with an offering to the customer. Okay. There's an existing way of buying fabric or something. Okay. What is the problem with that and what is the solution? We have to go to fabric. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. So, let's say part of our business is offered. Institutional sales. So, uh, one of the corporate problems is that you know they were again coming back to the ocean they were selling the same stuff and species. So we came out with a very innovative page, which has in a very short span of time separated us from the rest because of the power of our So that was our solution in terms of we offered a higher brand record for our customers. Yeah. Yeah. Good. What is that? Because the innovation will happen to solve a problem, correct? Right? 
there has to be a problem. Otherwise, the customer will not come and come and come. Marketing science. Marketing science. Because one thing on this problem thing that has come up many times in my mind. Today, when you are selling Rolex and Rolls Royce, what is the problem? The problem is one of those, you know, ego, vanity. And it's posturing in the social field. There is no problem of functional problem. It's an emotional problem. You don't want to see time. You can see time on your watch. So I don't want to phone it. So but you still buy a lot of things because it's a statement that you're making. It's an inadequacy of, you know, social posturing. Right? So, so the question is that innovation can happen to, it has to face a problem. Necessity is the mother of invention. Necessity is the another word to say problem. Problem is the mother of invention. How do you see the problem? For example, you know, we have a publisher here and I am writing a book and I have decided to sell books. I don't know anything about publishing, but I desire to learn and sell publish. Because publishing today takes 50 percent margin for just taking your book and giving it to the customer. If you go to if you make a book and put it on Flipkart, Flipkart takes 50 percent. Your book is 500 rupees, 200 rupees per show. You get to 50 rupees, then you pay the printer, you pay the This is the problem. The problem for me as an author who wants to bring my book out to my audience. So my problem, my solution is self-publishing. There have been other solutions, e-publishing and you know offering publishing solutions that are like bespoke and so many other solutions that come into the space. The space has a problem. All the biggest bookstores are becoming toy shops. Landmark is going to be seventy-five percent toys. Toys and twenty-five percent books. And that's the CEO who is saying that. Publishers have publishers are flying suits against the biggest bookstore states, Denmark, Oxford, Oxford are all facing legal suits from publishing houses because they want to get the money and give it to the publishers. So publishers have said their distribution problem. They don't pay. They don't pay. So what do you want to authors do? Authors are bristling with ideas who want to bring out creativity and put books out. If the readers who want those books and buy them, look at the office. Every industry, every segment, every sector has a problem. The question is that how do you perceive the problem? You cannot perceive the problem unless you are in the industry. You have to be somebody who is facing the problem like a customer. Most of the inventions have come from people who have faced problems. They have faced a problem, they have found that most of the exist. They have said, let me write the solution to the problem and start making it with the problem. So, you say the sufferer himself becomes a? Becomes the problem sufferer. Like I had cancer and I discovered that, you know, my, my, you know, my relatives in Goa, when was the issue of Tata Memorial, didn't have a place to stay, so I set up a, Home in your way, then you can come stay and go for it. It's a problem. But it doesn't be a solution or not. This is a very good NGO solution. So, so there is a problem with the solution. So every innovation is a solution to a problem which comes up and for which there is no offering that meets the problem. Take the latest case of Apple. We had Apple Maps, which was a problem. Okay, so and then Google Maps came and Apple had to acknowledge they put an arrow Google Maps in there. Which is a solution. So, so how do you hear of this problem? How do you hear of this problem? You are now a, you are not moving the market so much. You, you know, sit in your corner office. Your customers, you meet only when you pay all for. You know, you go for charity shows with them. You start getting distance from the problem of the customer. It happens in a large company, it can happen in a small company. So, you have to be in touch. What is your 
your feedback to your customer. Okay. Your customers will appreciate them. Second is your employees are in touch with your customers. So your employees will tell you what the problem the customer is facing and how we can fix it. For example, if you have continuous improvement plans, continuous every quarter you have a meeting, your employee is sitting in it is a Pune branch, will tell you, sir, a customer of Gaza has a problem. That can give you an idea that we can come with a new way of doing this, more better, more economical, more human, more useful, whatever, any one of those more that you And fix that problem and make your solution better than your competitors. That can become faster. So, to again share uh, examples, uh, we, were, we were going to do the Aadhaar Biometric, and many of you have done Aadhaar Biometric, know that it is a mess. Uh, so, I was in charge, and we were meeting with uh, you know, uh, the Aadhaar Biometric, okay? and uh, which is where we sold the uh, the project. And one of the things they prominently was not for the Aadhaar. If you do a process mapping of the of the other card, uh, you have to fill out a form. Then you have to the form takes time. The form has to be entered in the machine. Then the person retrieves your form to ensure that it is correct. Then your biometric gets done, the eyes, the fingerprint, and then the photograph. And then you see your output. Then you say yes, and then you get a printout. You sign and come up with the process. So we found out that actually a other center cost about three lakhs the cost of the biometric. But the biometric, they have, they have defined a capacity of 40 people to in an other center per day. That is why you have this problem with that. So my solution in the field was that we will write a software which will allow entering the scene, entering the details to be done in 10 pieces. So 10 agents will be there, go to an agent, enter your CV. Then the biometric is one. So the biometric happens in a minute. It doesn't take time. Entering the CV takes time. So entering the CV was to be spread and over 10 pieces. Why am I doing it in one PC? Print out and saying yes, it is all right and fix it in one PC. But UAE project said no. The software that is running the center will be our software. It will not try to So the problem was taking too much time. The solution was the problem for the private, private sector people not going on. Why you don't see, you can see only in banks and this? Because that too much like investment for that review to be that they give you for doing the other, is not worth it. Because if you only 40, you don't get it. You no private people do the other part. Only government, the beginning government, you know what inclination and what speed there, what possible government they take. So the other thing can be implemented as good as it should have. So every time you are there and you are facing this problem, there is a possibility of a solution. So that will come if you deserve your customers, if you deserve your employees, because your employees are listening to talking to your customers. Okay. The next is encourage your customers to give you feedback. Many companies involve their customers in product development. Software companies are, you know, user uh, uh, seminars, user conferences, or user meets where they call users, IT will call all IT guys and have a full day seminar, take you to Ronana, give you a t-shirt. But then end of the day they do things. What if they want you to buy an IT? The second thing is they also want you to tell them how they can improve IT. Every IT reseller will have some idea, you know, the product is like this, it feels like this and the customer will be fine. So they are using their resellers or their customers to improve their product. So that is another thing. The third is you are a you are a boy or a boy. They don't know what the heck they are doing. Your users don't come and tell you anything. So why do you get fresh ideas from? Okay, I have done this. Who will cross pollinate? So they will take something from the publishing industry, make it an abstract solution, and bring it into let us say the software industry. And then take something from the HR uh, recruitment space and bring that into some other industry. Oh, yes. So, consultants are very good. 
or they will have gun and uh, an agricultural uh, operation which we gave earlier and they will force them to the they are export in agricultural operation and what was it from that part of the government that you also can you tell me so solution one for two customers is perfect <laughs> so, so they and they, they will go and then you will be soon in the red ocean because the computer is not doing the same thing because they both are the same person. <laughs> so, so that that if you hire a person to cross pollinate, if you are a large company, if you need to do R and D, you can you know set up your own farm or lab, do R and D. Even in software, you can do R and D. Uh, Apple has invested a lot in R and D. That's why you know we find the user interface to be so nice and so. Give you a lot. So, user UI, user interface can also be R&D technology. You can, if you run out of ideas, if the competitors are coming with ideas and they can't implement, so you can acquire their help and you can tell them, you know, listen, you have this idea, but you don't know how to take it to market. So let me pay you whatever and acquire their help. Okay, that can be possible. And the last thing, what is the negligence? Cisco does, I think, uh, I think they do about one acquisition every week. Uh, every week they are buying it. You do about 50 acquisitions every week. They have a department, entire ecosystem of auto mobile engineering around the Puna area of groups. Because there were some other ships that thought that this model acquisition was not good. If you go, if you, if you take the Auto care, auto, you know, engineering drawings, auto test and other things, CAD-CAM drawings. Puna has got the largest segment in the country where there are high-end shops that do the entire drawings and design for foreign companies. Not of Detroit work, not of Italian work, not of British work, not of German work, from Shukuna. Because there are all these engineers who are drawing cars for Tata and Bajaj and Tesco and got tired of drawing those, you know, tempos and <laughs> trucks and had better skills and went out and set up their own plant and went out and designed cars for Italians. That means they must be a very strange possibility that the other part of it now it has not been, you know, it actually encouraged in the machine. Exactly. So, so it happens. Okay. If you go to Redmond, Microsoft, if you go to Silicon Valley, where do all these startups come from? Somebody had the problem, somebody had the test, and the employee couldn't do what is known as Intra Apprenticeship. They became outside and they became an employer. So, the, the thing that, is, that you might do as an employee is that, as an employer is that, your employees might understand the problem, we or may not talk to you, and you may not have a you know, continuous improvement plan in place. And they might see an opportunity to go and become their company. Or offer something that is, you know, not exactly competition, but something similar or something even better or that uh, The other thing is that, you know, your employees should not get IDs from others. And this happens a lot in the software, you know, IT industry. Your, your, you tell your you know, employee, I want this image to be handled in a certain way. And he says, sir, no problem, do this now, okay. So then he wants to come in two days, you don't like this board, you know, and then he's, he's in a plug-in area of the board. Actually, from his previous employment, he's bought the board. And that board is now part of your software. So it is actually somebody else's money. But your employer is not that kind of important, and now it is your product. Which is all right, if you're a small company, you don't need to work out, but when a large company or you become successful, that can become the matter of an IP event. So why you don't want him? Why should take your invention out to somebody else or to start their own business? You also don't want your employees to bring stuff from outside. So my you know one of the things that we wanted to do is you put a kind of design and you wanted an animation, you wanted somebody running and coming into the field and becoming the uh, the and somebody came in with 5,000 rupees and we thought that would be good and we made it and then we told him, you know, this, this looks like a boy running, it looks like a theater of boy running. It doesn't gel well because, you know, ours is about, you know, men running and, you know, girls running. 
So can you believe that this is the way of this is the way? I said, why are you doing this? Why don't you make me do this? He said, no, that was already developed for somebody who was tired for that. So when I am going to explain it, I just made it into your logo and gave me. Which, which means that, you know, that animation was made by him for some other customer. Maybe a foreign customer or maybe some other customer. Who probably didn't accept it or probably even accepted it. We don't know. Maybe that boy running is being used by somebody somewhere. And today you are getting somebody else's mask. So we told him nothing to do. I don't want to do this. Because the more if I grow and become large, I don't want to be the IP school where, you know, somebody says, oh, this guy should not do it. So I said, I don't want this. I want a fresh piece. It should come. I pay for it, but it should be mine. And, and lastly, explore IP for it. This every business should do simple things like, you know, brand, logo, a thing that you can register. It costs only 5,000 rupees to do it. Go to a good lawyer. Please register your brand and your logo. That whatever it is, you know, whether you are successful or you are not successful, you have some protection or at least you are your brand. Uh, coming to, you know, internal problems, that's going to be the example. Uh, there were three friends of mine in Pune. And they were working with the Veritas. Veritas are the people who do online platforms for very large companies. So when uh, the 9 11 happened, and you know, those, those aircraft flew into the World Trade Center, and JP Morgan, and so many other companies that their operations, it was, it was Veritas software. They were running in the background and keeping a minute by minute copy, backup, in some other places. Okay? So, many of these banks, when they came back online after one or two days, nothing had to be touched. Because the last transaction was captured by Veritas. So, there was this bunch of guys in Veritas and one of them was a good friend of mine. They used to go to this Veritas and you know, sell it to solution to, say, IBM or Coca-Cola or JP Morgan or whoever. And they would say that, you know, you have this fantastic solution for this server farm that we have. And our server farm will get replicated in some other distant location, business community, all this. But what about my laptop? And I'm asking this question, what about your laptop? What what your backup plan if your laptop is stolen from your car? So nothing got it. Got maybe Google Google yeah. drop or drop or so that's only some part of the data. Right. Not all the data. Only what do I do with those forces? So, madam, what will happen to your data if you are not doing something? What will happen to your laptop? Forget the laptop. What will happen to the phone data? I have personalized multiple laptops. Good. We just investigated this day in my office because I run a lot of internet activity myself. So, I asked my guy to investigate. He came out of the range of backup options. Which one? 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 Of the cloud, humongous amount of data. So yeah, it's very important. Very important. So, so this, this the executives are facing all these problems, but the solution of the data was only geared to their back server end. farm, back end, the, the enterprise level solution, and not to the desktop level solution. So these guys came back and told, kept telling the data, "No, we need to do, we need to do something." The data said, "Are they desktop? Are they put up because this is not going to be interesting." Is my camera there? So that was their approach. These guys came out and started their own business today. They are called Dua and they are doing very well through Dua. And you know, Dua is an online solution. I think they have a free uh, data that you can download and you can you know, install it and it will back up it will do a real time backup of your laptop in the browser. And they got funded and you know, they have grown up with this. So, so all, all innovations happen because of the problem. And if you don't define the problem statement, you can't agree. So, so that is what we need to watch out for. Now, coming to services. When it comes to a product, uh, a tangible product, one can you know, decide more clear, lighter, colorful, better packaging, all this can be you know, defined and you can make a product. 
But how do you ensure consistent quality in your hair? With a solo brand. <laughs> so, or consistent quality in your IT service if you are meeting with a company. Or consistent quality in you know, the form being filled for the examiners. Or consistent quality in the interview process. So each of the services can be thought of like a product. And one can productize the services and bring about the feature of a product into a service. So it is the principles of engineering, product engineering, moving into service sector and making products out of services. So why do we need this? You know, the first thing is you have consistent service experience. If you don't have productization, then the service experience can depend upon the person rendering the service. It will be very dependent upon the individual. Hey, engineer ko mat bejo, usko bejo. Koi baar aata hai, wo mera problem samjhe. Ye nahi samjhe. Kya bade ye DC engineer aur IT service. Kya? Aur you can say you go into salon and say, "Hey, mere ko abhi baar karna hai." Ye baar karna hai. We have a favorite model. There are a lot of services that depend upon the skills of the person. We don't have But there are a lot of services that can be made skill independent. Or an unskilled service provider can be given the training to make the service experience consistent. Hey, we are a better program. So, you know, that's because that better gives you better service. But you can train all the users consistently if you decide what should be the consistent service. And all waiters will be equally good. So every waiter in McDonald's, something else they have made up of McDonald's, will treat you and treat you with the same. Whereas that will not happen in a uh, restaurant which doesn't have a problem. You have high pages, 
will do 30 blog posts, we will do 20 tweets, we will do 5 Facebook updates, and we will open more than Google Plus account in case something goes in. So, so you can productize your services, you can fix your price, you can bring about standardization in your offer. And it will not be different for each person who is coming in. Because of that, you can easily think, you can easily you know, ensure that uh, the service is rendered consistently. Each person getting a haircut gets the same quality of haircut and has the same user experience. Uh, you can contain cost. Um, the, the example is given of, uh, <coughs> of a law firm where you can have a junior uh, lawyer who doesn't know how to write in particular document and takes more time and then a senior has to fix it. Whereas if you productized, your partnership agreement or your and you have a template given approach to the process. Anybody can now say, okay, there are 10 crosses in this agreement and each cross has these five options. Which option do you choose? And render it seamlessly without having to do an innovation for every time you sit down and make a document to and, and, and the cost of rendering the service can be contained because you don't know that to do a legal agreement <coughs> it should take you 45 minutes. Maximum one. You did not now sit and say, Nay, this is the customer for the IA, customer team, customer team, then he again came and they were able to do it. Okay. In your experience, uh, for say new industries like software industries, are there any guidelines uh, how to productize the service? Well, it seems to me that there is some sort of innovation required in this for how to productize. Right? Uh, you know, like you gave the example of SEO, etc., which is my industry, which I am. I don't want to answer to my industry, but generally speaking. So, what industry are you in? Digital marketing. So, we have this uh, issue for sake of the argument where everybody in the country, virtually, everybody in the I'm sure, needs some form of websites and internet uh, requirements. But the, and people inquiries come to our website from say everybody in this room. Everybody wants something different. Right. So this, this is my case. So I don't want to answer my case, but you know, seem to know what Alan speaks about. So we 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 come to the next slide. Okay. Go to the next slide. Okay. Fine. And I'll answer that. Okay. And of course, you know, there is process improvement and there is greater credibility. When you, are, when you go to say that this is my service and I have three plans, plan A, plan B, plan C, or call them silver, platinum, gold, or whatever the whatever fancy that you want, economy, rural, package, whatever. You have better credibility because it looks like you have a structured offer. You have thought about it, you, have, you know the problems, you know that there are two, three different types of problems that can come up for a customer. For each type of problem, we have a type of solution. So there is greater credibility because it looks as if currently you all, these guys have figured everything out. You know, I don't really have to think. For example, coming back to the publishing uh, scenario, uh, because self publishing is becoming such a big uh, thing, and most people are not self publishing, Penguin Books, we all heard of them, have come out with a subsidiary called Packet Publishing. And if you go to Packet Publishing and go to their website, they have about five or seven options on how you can go about self-publishing. So the simplest option will be creativity. One editor will spend so much time and uh, they will give you a website for the book. It will be the simplest option. To the other one, <coughs> where you know, the editor will sit down for more time, there will be 50 other layout options and they will improve the you know, the proof, they will do two proofing and there will be a website and there will be five promotional videos and there will be a press media coverage and all that. So if they have a package for 21,000 rupees, they have a package for 1,500 rupees. To help you self publish your book, you pay the printer and then you, you sell a lot of resume. So if you want to product, so this is how the publishing industry is innovative. By, by productizing their services. 
earlier it was all funded. You know, if if I, I for example went to Jaipur and they know the owners and they know the and all that. And then when I heard that they were like 50% and give me only 5% or 10%, I said, you know, this is the city. So I write the code. I know my content. And they will bring an editor, they will bring an editor, they will bring an the artist. And then they will not market. That is all. Publishers don't market. Move out. Tell him, you have to market it yourself. If you have Chetan Bhagat, you know, the media will market it. Otherwise, in India today, if you said 2,000 books, you are considered a bestseller. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. We are going to share something for our business and publishing and school and children books. Huh. So, uh, my first edition is generally 3 to 5,000 copies. Hmm. Uh, but what happens is that we get it prescribed. Hmm. So, we are saying... So, there is a push. Demand is created. Yeah, we are creating a demand where there is a certain section. But if I have a category of Chetan Bhagat style book, then the media is not going to support me. I can even sell 300 copies. Cannot sell. So if you, if you can't sell 300 copies of a book, and the other rule of the industry is that if a book is more than 400 rupees, it should not sell. No book should be more than 400 rupees, is what the publishing industry believes. They are part of this paradigm and So, it is not profitable. You don't sell books. More than 400 rupees, you can't sell. The author will not have more than 300 or 400 books sold. So what money do you pay for the author? You make that little money, you don't know which one is going to be successful. So you pay all others less. So because you pay all others less, no author will need to know you because if I know my book is going to be sold and I am confident of my book and I am willing to take the risk, why should I come to you? I can hire an editor of my book, I can hire a layout of my book, I can hire a printer of my book, and I can get an ISB number and publish my book. So what I can do? You can you can do it on Amazon, you can do it on Kindle, you can do it on Flipkart, you can do it on any version of the book. So so everybody's heard of that book called Fifty Shades of Grey. Everybody's heard of it, right? No one's ready. For the right reason, for the right reason or the wrong reason. <laughs> okay, anyway. Fifty Shades of Grey became a big hit because the ladies are published. It didn't come in print. It became a raging return of the information. So anyway, that is how uh, you know product improvement is happening and that's how industries are moving. And you know that is how you, that is why you should productize your services. Sir, the, there is a thin line between a product and a commodity. Commoditization of services can also happen. So how can we distinguish it? So what is the difference between productization? Every uh, haircut in Saru will give you a haircut. And all haircuts are different. <coughs> if, if, if you go to Bombay, almost all saloons will have a solution package. Right? So that is commoditization, all commodity things. But if you go for the same haircut in a five star hotel, that rate is not <coughs> So the five star hotels have broken the commodity. This guy want to be in the commodity because they feel it's safe to be part of the industry, production. So everybody charges you 25, 30 or 40 rupees for the hair. The average saloon industry. But if you go to a Faisha, it's about you know, 400, 500 rupees, you're going to come up with Faisha. So that is not commoditization. But productization is that saloon can charge 35, 40 rupees. But you can make a list saying that in my haircut, you will get a clean cloth. You will get something that will not push your head onto your t-shirt. After that, this I will wash you with water and shampoo you for free. So you can you can you can productize your solution and say that this is what you get. And you can happen it very much to your manicure and your pedicure also. And you say if we want to product productize a certain service, explore all aspects that are measurable. Correct. Measurable aspects of that. And make it into measurement. So that you can now bring about all the benefits of mass delivery. Standardizing. Instead of each process being a unique uh, so How do you go about productizing? Take your most asked for services. So, the question about digital marketing. 
So some of them will be asked for all the time. So they can product it. Some of them will be unique. Some some author will come and say, I want five hundred layers. I don't want three because this book is about the Taj Mahal and the peak of the Taj Mahal. He wants five hundred. So we make a unique package for him. But the average author will come. We'll be happy with three colors or two packets. So take your most valuable services and make them into products. I give your services in whatever way you want. Five, six, seven. Brand your offer. So instead of calling it family package and this, you know, try to give some some brand. Family. You mean gold silver you're talking about? Yeah, gold silver is one way of branding. It just kind of distinguishes between the three offerings. Mm -hmm. But you can have something like. Uh, Club class, you know, economy is another way of branding. In my industry, the main general is equipment. So, society is the one economy. So, we call it the Janta class. Janta is a high, 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 high. Who is it? Who is it? Janta class is a Sasta. And if I go to builder, I say it's a premium or rich class. This is a very important product. Or the same product but with different features, let's say, measurable. And I have to sell at a higher price. So this is how I do. You go by the general mentality of people. What vocabulary they are using. Janta class means any color will say Janta will be sasta. If it's a premium, then you know it is better and better. So you fetch more price. So do that. That would be what are the principles of branding? Branding has to resonate with the customer. Yes. And he has to see that brand name and the brand values. As something that is good, so that is what the Rolex is. Or like classic and royal. <laughs> classic and royal. So many things. You you can brand the services. So therefore, by branding it, you keep it there. You don't say it's uh, it's you know bridal services. You say Ishwari Rai package, mm -hmm. and you say Vipasha Basu package. <laughs> something like that. Yeah, that could be a brand. <coughs> but you have to brand those services and. You know, Katrina guy might not have a blow dry, but you know, Ashwarya guy might have a permit. You can make it template even, so that there are template checklists, whatever you want to call them. There will be measurable results. You can say that at the end of the Ashwarya guy package, the skin will glow. So, for example, for example, you know. If you go to spas today, for example, they have all these packages. You know, they have like a menu book, and they say this Swedish spa, the aromatic spa, the Ayurvedic spa, and they have different packages of you know uh, premium manicure, ordinary manicure, whatever. So you can, you can, you can, you know, you can prioritize them and give them measurable results. Like and lastly, standardized delivery methodology. Good morning, sir. What can I do? Will you have fries with it? Or you know, like the most irritating call center. Or good sir. Or good sir. Thank you, sir. Good day, sir. So you get a kind of very standardized way of delivering. It can be very irritating. Now a lot of services they are saying namaste. Or like they are also good smiling for you. The two hundred passengers coming. You wish you they don't smile. Like when you go to the Taj, they are staying at the Taj, they do a puja. Yeah. Especially if you are a foreigner and you know, you are a VAT, you have to go to the Taj. Water water or water water? If you water water, you have to go to the Taj. Or you know, if you buy a car today, cars, you know, they have the entire thing. For, for, you know, if you go to a mentor, you know, they will see whether you are a Hindu or a Christian or a Muslim. So the dashboard will put that. Then based on your religion, they will, you know, do aarti or puja or you know, do the you know, sprinkle water, make your expression. So they will do all that, and they will make that car delivery into a user experience. Same thing if you go to Mercedes, it's different. They make a video of taking your car. They call your family in the morning. They leave you at three o'clock. From eleven o'clock to three o'clock, they make it into a very, very memorable event. They give you a video graph. Obviously, they are making a video. So, so every day, you know, package according to its 
is this money and is the rate of so buying a Rolex exclusively will be different from buying a time machine. Okay. So, so, so you can have standard and general view. Sir, one of the MRI sector asked me whether you want black and white or colored. Ah. MRI is the plus ah. film nickel ah. that. So, MRI is the key, see, key, see. Yeah. No, I think uh, they say it, but they want in the black and white of this and then the jacket of it will be taken and referred to your doctor. Uh, something is done by anybody. Yeah, even different medicine today. If it, I have had a bypass surgery. Yes. I have had a cardiac bypass surgery. So today you go to Asian and the cardiac surgery. You get yeah. a common bed, you get individual bed, you get executive bed, you get VIP bed, team lab, sorry, team lab, char lab, chair. Certain things are common. Everybody will undergo surgical, logical thing. But the food you get in that package will be different from the food you get in this package. Hmm? You get to eat your store. So again, how to prioritize the service continuity? You have to pass the process, which is the you know, it's like your horoscope or the general mobility of your business. Mapping the process, you either you have to do innovation or improvisation or just stabilization or quality innovation, you have a blueprint before you can do anything. Uh, my, of course, you know, you can use technology as much as possible to do standard services. Uh, you can train your employees and you can, of course, monitor the deviations. So all the rules that apply for uh, quality control, like uh, training, training for the employees to deliver the transition. Smile <coughs> for everybody. How many of you have gone to the IAS skin clinic? Good. So others don't know where is the IAS. So if you go to the IAS skin clinic, the user experience is the same. And if you go to any clinic, wherever you are, the, the words and the way they will treat you for each of those treatments is the same. Every, every Kaya skin clinic uh, employee gets trained extensively to deal with you in the most ideal way. So they know, for example, that when your eyes are closed and you are undergoing <coughs> some facial treatment, they will tell you what they are going to do next because they want to. You will have anxiety about what is going to happen to you when my eyes are closed. So they will tell you now I will be spraying water to the cold. Now I will be wiping your face with the towel. So you, your, your anxiety is that one So that is spraying. You know what is coming. You know what is coming. You don't have surprises. Kaya is coming under the formula of my medical. They are able to afford those kind of training. How does a small entertainment enterprise or a startup uh, afford? It's not about money. It's about you deciding that this is how my customer will be serviced. And telling your employees, please service my customers in this way. And how do you know how your customer will be serviced? Problem. What is the problem of the customer? What kind of a service he wants? What will delight him? What will fill him? What will excite him? What will make him say, ah?
uh, slowly uh, ingrained into the organization which is running kind of because it, it might seem overwhelming to really get into complete and you know launch. So how how will you suggest to start and you know, slowly get into that complete mode of product development? Excellent. And I really love this question because uh, there is a saying that in we are moving from theory to practice. How to make it actionable? Okay, this is at an abstract level, this is all theory, very nice to hear. You know, you come and listen to Venkat Raman, you feel so excited. So if you go back and look at this employee of yours, what are you? He's going to have a different expression on his face, which, which takes away all your excitement. Okay, that's the reality of life. And, uh, and uh, there is this saying that in theory, there is no difference between theory and practice. In theory, there is no difference between theory and practice. I saw oil and I say oil That is what theory says. So the saying is that in theory there is no difference between theory and practice, but in practice there is. <laughs> so whatever you might talk and whatever you might take bullet points from here, you are not going to be able to go and implement it in the most ideal way. But having said this, there is still ways in which you can roll it up. It depends firstly upon what level your organization is. You cannot change the culture over there. If your organization has always been delivering consistently and well, there has been some culture that has come into that organization. It could have come from you, it could have come from your customers, it could have come from your head of operations who bought that rigidity into it. Right? This is a certain culture. You have to decide where you are in that culture. Am I an organization that delivers seamlessly? Or every day is a miracle ki aaj kar ko isa kaisa bhi ho kaya hai. Okay, you have to think where you are in the culture scale. Okay, depending upon where you are, the first step will be different for each company. And there cannot be one process. So first you decide where you are in the culture scale, where your employees are in the culture scale, what kind of a uh, background they have, what kind of a desire for change they have. So, if you take these two maps, then depending upon where you are and where you want to go, you can do a gap analysis. So, what does this mean? This is again abstract. Okay. What does this mean? My organization today, I mean, each one of you could, could, could be now think of it, is today at a stage where in terms of processes, I am between 0 and 10 and 2 or 4 or 6. Okay? You define what is 10, where you want to do. And I am at 3. So this is where you are in terms of a process. In terms of an ultimate process, you can define what is 10. That's why you should do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can't have a checklist for me. 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 Consistency. You can't go too far, right? 
simply don't want to lag behind the customer acquisition. And this is the gap, and in this gap, this is the reason why we put to fix this thing. I'll share you my experience. What is said to be very, very careful, especially when <coughs> you assess your employees' uh, level. Okay, I did this, I did some business seminar, and they asked us to go back to your team. How to uh, you know get the business better? So, so whatever level they look at, and the manufacturing, so they are basically anta bhavu. They pursue totally differently. They are pursue totally different. First thing what is it? They always feel insecure. And I called my main person who has been with me ten years. So I have talked to him. That now, how can the company go ahead? Because it was a slack in the business. Or how can they do it? I was trying to become transparent because that is what the better they were telling. The person comes to in my home and says, "Our company bank will never lie." Yes. You see, the total different person. You have to be very careful about the receptivity of those people and at what level they are operating. So you have to go down to their pocket level, understand them, and don't throw at them everything. Otherwise, they will bombard it and they start feeling insecure. Be careful about it. If you want to grow and with this kind of work setup, see if you can end up one more. Little better person than you can understand your language and what is your vision. This is very very difficult. So you have to be careful with whom you are dealing. This is my own experience. I'm sharing. So, so the 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 very nicely said. Uh, let's say after this seminar and after this talk, you are so full of ideas, you are so energetic, you are thought of you know fifteen things. My girl, I can tell you. That's it. Yeah. 
my lectures, I, I have to see everything it didn't take months, it took three days. Three days later, when I, when I, when I, when I yeah, start, people don't need to make a monthly PNL. This is billing, hua, so billing can be made a lot. This bank statement, take the electricity bill, take the internet bill, take all the bills from here. This is normal. And this is our operating problem. We didn't have depreciation and my salary, yes. whatever, it was not done. Three days later, they tell me, Jaya Bhavya Tamil Nadu has 30% come. What happened was, whatever the employees would do at their end, they just took it. I mean, they looked at our electricity bill and said, sir, we are spending 23,000 rupees on an AC cut air conditioning cost. Overnight, everything that I had been screaming at for the last three months, when AC band kya karo, AC band kya karo, one kya karo. The minute the, the you know, transfer fee was done and the data was given to the same people, you know, what happens is we operate on one set of data, they have enough day and they don't have the same data that we are operating from. We know the financials, they don't. The minute that thing happened, it unleashed a, it made a whole lot of people much more receptive to change. So I guess that is one suggestion which I'd like to give. I mean, you need to see a large company, with Cargill right now, where okay, the whole leadership used to be the whole sales team, 250 people across the country, all used to come back and tell us, sir, this company has a red board, a red board. I talked to the leadership, the leadership said, boss, we are doing 4,000 crores in turnover and there is no profit, 15 crores. The first thing we did now, what we did was, we asked them, we are both in brand, this is a company which has genuine nature question. So we asked a question, sir, a brand company, we are all about brand and yes, yes. Brand is how much profit is going to be. Some people said 2%, some people said 4%, some people said 6%. We said, how much is it going to be? How much is it going to be? How much is it going to be? Great. IDC is going to be. How much is it going to be? 22%. Cigarette. All crime, all, 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 this thing, all, 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 bad habits, this is how much is it. Then we showed them, okay, money industry is going to be. We showed Marico. Again, 12%. Then we showed Ruchi Sola. That was 0.4%. Okay, so we have 40%. Then we said, okay, look, this is a money company. There is a bunch of people, let's say small company or large company. Most people have very little idea about the top line and the bottom line of their organization. So this is one thing that we can share with people. We had people come